activities are the central features of lessons. These are the things that we use to help students practice, to apply and to make use of the content and the knowledge that we're teaching them. We can use Bloom's taxonomy to structure our activities and in so doing we can ensure that there is a degree of mastery being built into the lesson and that students are experiencing that level of stretch and challenge as they progress. One technique I really like is where you plan an activity and compose it of a series of different elements and those elements reflect Bloom's taxonomy. So for example, we might have a history lesson where the main activity actually takes up quite a large portion of the lesson. But within that activity, we have three subsections. The first section is concerned with knowledge and comprehension, the second section with application or analysis, and the third section with synthesis or evaluation. So we draw these three sections together and present the task to students as if it's one general task, one overall task. But we know that actually, as students move through that task, so they are going to face an increasing level of challenge. And this is underpinned by Bloom's taxonomy. Now, when we use an activity like this, something to consider is that it might be the case that not all students reach the end of the activity. In our history example, some learners might get to the analysis stage and actually find that that is sufficiently challenging for them at that point in time. Other learners may progress past that and find themselves working at that evaluation stage, the third subsection of the activity that we planned. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think what we've got there is a nicely differentiated activity where different learners are reaching different points which are relevant to them for that stage in time. It may be that later on, perhaps in a subsequent lesson, we do some work so that those learners that stopped at analysis can get up to the evaluation level. But just for that activity itself, we can feel confident that all learners are being challenged, even if that challenge is coming at different points within the activity. To sum up then, Bloom's taxonomy can be used to structure individual activities and a nice technique to use is to create an activity with three subsections to it which get increasingly more difficult and mirror the structure of the taxonomy itself. Golden Nugget. You can use Bloom's taxonomy to structure and sequence your lesson activities.